comes to us from the book of Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth there will be dismay among nations in their confusion over the roaring of the sea and surging waves. The planets and other earthly bodies will be shaken, causing people to faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. Then they will see the human one coming on a cloud with power and great splendor. Now when these things begin to happen, stand up straight and raise your heads, because your redemption is near. Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all of the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that God's kingdom is near. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until everything has happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. Take care that your hearts aren't dulled by drinking parties, drunkenness, and the anxiety of day-to-day -day life. Don't let that day fall upon you unexpectedly like a trap. It will come upon everyone who lives on the face of the whole earth. Stay alert at all times, praying that you are strong enough to escape everything that is about to happen and to stand before the human one. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We've all seen them. Those people who get so involved in what's happening on their smartphones that they don't look up and acknowledge others near them, or they don't notice a potential danger that's nearby. All of their attention is focused on whatever it is that they are interacting with at that moment, despite the immediate situation. Maybe we're guilty of it ourselves. YouTube is full of videos of accidents that befall some smartphone users who can't disconnect from, for their own good. They find themselves in situations where they trip or they walk into walls or worse. And when, when we see this, it makes us want to call out to them and say, look out, so that maybe we could help to make a difference for that distracted smartphone user. Christmas can be something like a smartphone in a way. As soon as Halloween ends and sometimes even before that, the Christmas decorations begin showing up on store shelves. The advertisements for the perfect gifts are inescapable. Decorations and party planning can consume all of our free time. There is so much to do and only so many days left before Christmas to do it. It all must be done in time and it all must be done just right. So many of us are distracted and overly focused on all of the hustling and bustling that Christmas brings for us. We simply get drawn into the commercialized frenzy and feel the pressure of getting Christmas right. And with all the stresses it can create, we may be struggling to find the joy Christmas is supposed to bring us. So we come to church on this first Sunday of Advent looking for a gospel message that reflects joyful excitement and merry anticipation of Christmas. But the gospel this week doesn't sound merry or joyful. It vividly reminds us of how easily we can lose sight of what we really should be preparing and watching for in the coming days. Today's reading started with, with verse 25, and it says, On the earth there will be dismay among nations in their confusion over the roaring of the sea and surging waves. The planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken, causing people to faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. Well, that's lacking in merriment, and I'm pretty sure you won't find it on a holiday greeting card. So if the lesson for today sounds a little familiar, too, it's because it is Luke's version of the same teaching of the Gospel of Mark that we heard two weeks ago. 
Jesus was in Jerusalem at this point in his ministry. In just a, the next few days, his life on earth would end in the most brutal and gruesome manner. But he was spending time in the temple, as well as time on the Mount of Olives, teaching his disciples and the many people who were following him. You see, Jesus begins this lesson earlier in the chapter of Luke, telling the disciples that the temple will be destroyed and that none of the stones will remain standing. Then he goes on to say that nations and kingdoms will go to war against one another, that great earthquakes, famines, and plagues will cover the world. He also tells them that as they devote their lives to him, they will be persecuted in the most horrible ways. He uses words like woe, vengeance, wrath, and distress. And then today's passage begins with words like dismay, confusion, roaring seas, and heavenly bodies being shaken. Jesus is letting his disciples in on what they will experience as they await his second coming. The imagery and descriptions used here in Luke are important. The images are attention getters. We envision roaring seas and planets being shaken and people fainting in fear and heaven and earth in turmoil and humanity being in chaos and we all get real uncomfortable. The discomfort that Jesus provokes in his followers with this language is necessary. Jesus needs his disciples and us to know that terrible, difficult, even painful times are ahead for his believers. And he wants us to not just be prepared, but to also look out. We are like the disciples in our Advent waiting. While we wait, we too are faced with tragedies and crises that befall our world. And that's a difficult part of the text to hear today. That as we wait, we will experience all kinds of worldly events and personal trials. We also heard in this text that when these things happen, God's kingdom is coming near. We've all heard claims of religious leaders predicting the end of times based on scriptural texts like this. It is true that each new generation is drawing nearer to the end of times, and the coming of the kingdom is closer at hand, but these texts aren't meant to be time markers for the when that will occur. The end times are not based upon our accounting of time, rather all things are based on God's time for us. So we wait while disturbing and terrible things continue to happen. In verses 32 and 33, Jesus said, I assure you that this generation won't pass away until everything has happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. Even in apocalyptic times, his word stands up through the chaos and turmoil. His word continues to be present in the most difficult of times. God's word will not pass away in the midst of human and earthly destruction. God's word lives on through it all, for us and for all of humanity. And in God's word of love and grace, we can find peace for the wait. Jesus gives his followers some advice for the difficult days ahead. He told them, to take care that their hearts aren't dulled by drinking parties, drunkenness, and anxieties of day-to-day -day life. And he said to stay alert at all times, praying that they are strong enough to escape everything that is about to happen and to stand before the human one. I believe he is saying that we need to be aware of how we invest our time and energies. Be aware that our hearts can be dulled, can be overwhelmed, by our day-to-day -day lives. When all that we experience takes a toll on our hearts and our spirits, it becomes difficult to stay alert. It isn't easy to be aware or to stay faithful 
when we let our attention on God's word slip from our focus. Jesus says that when we are in the midst of all the chaos and trials, we are to stand up straight, to raise our heads, because our redemption is near. I started today's message talking about people who, with their heads down, staring at their smartphones, can miss seeing important things. If they raise their heads and look up from those phones and become aware of what lies ahead, they can steer clear of a multitude of problems. We know that phones aren't the only things that cause people to look down and to miss what's important. So what is keeping you from raising your head, from looking up? When things are going wrong in our lives, we tend to look down, both figuratively and literally. We look down on ourselves. It brings to mind the image of a small child who can't bring themselves to look up at a grown-up after having caused some sort of disappointment. You know what I mean, right? It's like when the child's posture is slumped over at the shoulders and the head is heavy. And raising their head and facing their challenges could change things. Maybe it starts with an apology and leads to forgiveness. And in the end, that child does, in fact, raise their head. As adults, we may not assume that childlike posture when things go wrong but we sure know that feeling. Maybe it's the sense that we have fallen short of someone's expectations, maybe of God's expectations. Maybe lately we are so caught up in the demands of the Christmas holidays that we lose sight of God altogether. It can be difficult to see past the commercialism and the unnecessary expectations of the season. That's when we need to ask ourselves, where are we looking? Are some of us looking down, unable to anticipate the joy of a Christmas due to pressures, illness, grief, or personal trials? Are we looking down because our faith has been shaken and our doubts are weighing on us? Are we looking down because people have hurt us or belittled our sense of worth in our family, our workplace, or this world? Are we looking down because with all the problems that exist in this world, we feel hopeless to fix it? Are any of us looking down because we feel unworthy to come to God in repentance, assured of his grace? See, God's word continues to assure us that we all are worthy of God's grace through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. God promises that we are not left on our own to face the difficulties that this world and our life present. God promises that the baby we are waiting for this Advent season is our salvation and our hope. And Jesus is telling us today to raise our heads, to stand straight so that we can look up. Look up and see that God is with you. He is with each of us. Look up and know that hope is born. Hope lived, died, and was resurrected for your salvation. Look up and know how deeply God loves each of you. Set aside the gift wrap, the party invitations, and the travel schedules, and look up, faithful that God will see us through whatever challenges we face as we wait. Just look up. Let's pray together. Glorious Father, we look to you during this time of Advent for your peace as we wait Guide our hearts and minds to be open to hearing you and seeing you in our daily lives. Guide our actions to be responses to all that you have blessed us with as we share our message of love and grace that you've given to us. 
Lord, we give you thanks for your Son, our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Help us to do all things through him for your glory. Amen.